It's exciting to see what's taking shape for Auckland with the opportunity for light rail to support urban transformation. Um, across the ditch, we've seen that transport has been significantly disrupted by COVID, but we know that we will get back to a new normal. I think many of us now are appreciating our local communities and seeing the value in 20 minute neighbourhoods in perhaps a way that we haven't before. And I think the concept of 15 to 20 minute neighbourhoods encourages walking and cycling and light rail is a great complement to more active and sustainable transport choices. It's also really important to understand the unique demographic makeup of the communities alongside the future corridors in order to fully understand how their lifestyle influences their transport choices. Next slide, please, Rob. We know that transport is an important part of city shaping and the attractiveness of cities as a place to live, to do business, depends on the quality of our public transport, as well as how well it integrates with the rest of the transport network. We saw that recently in Sydney when Google chose not to invest as an anchor tenant in the Bayes precinct because it wasn't being well served by public transport. We know that transport networks, as you've heard earlier, are the backbone of our cities, and we are becoming increasingly aware that transport access is crucial for the economy, particularly if you're planning to reshape cities in a post-COVID world. Investing in light rail has the ability to shape new communities, connect really great places, and help both locals and visitors alike move around and explore what Auckland has to offer. High capacity and reliable services can really open up great urban renewal opportunities. And I think beyond the focus on the transport connections, light rail really does have an ability to change the way that we think about place and the communities that it serves. To fully leverage the value of the investment that we're making in light rail, I think we've heard that it's really important to think about master planning our communities, thinking about rezoning to support housing and local employment growth, as well as looking at the other types of infrastructure and services that are going to be required to meet the future needs of those particular locations. I think we've got a unique opportunity to take a place first approach and create great places to live, work and play. Um, we know there's significant economic benefits to, to light rail, particularly around the land use activation. We know it can be a catalyst for urban renewal and regeneration. And as you heard from Amanda, the investment in the permanent infrastructure creates a lot more certainty for both the community and for local businesses, helping to encourage that investment in property development and urban renewal. Um, it helps drive uh, increases in land value, particularly in those lower density areas where we might be providing better public transport access and better transport choices. Um, light rail also has a higher user experience, which increases people's willingness to use it, creating both demand for housing and for access to businesses along the corridors. To really capture the benefits of light rail, it's important to have an appropriate business case and appraisal framework in place, one that considers the value and the impact on place and not just on movement. Um, Transport for New South Wales has made some really good progress in the space in recent years with the development of the movement and place framework, which is about making sure that we're getting the right mix of transport in the right locations to create those attractive places and spaces for people that they're actually able to enjoy. Next slide, please, Rob. One quick example if we can get it to pop up, is Fisherman's Bend in Melbourne, which is a really interesting example of a differentiated focus on urban renewal. The business case focused both on the value that could be created by the urban renewal components of the project, as well as the value capture mechanisms that could be applied to generate a larger funding envelope. Fisherman's Bend is one of the largest urban renewal sites in Australia and poses a really significant opportunity to improve the economy and to maintain Melbourne's reputation as a livable city. The project focused on the value that could be created by leveraging the opportunities around livability, increased business activity, sustainability, accessibility, and importantly, the integration with walking and cycling and other public transport services. The, the Fisherman's Bend framework included the assessment of well-serviced, medium and high density housing options for about 80,000 people, as well as looking at a diverse mix of uses and activities, public amenity and green space as well. There was a considered focus on the agglomeration of business activity and the attraction of high value and innovative businesses that would drive greater economic value for the precinct. 
Um, Fisherman's Bend will be the largest urban renewal Green Star community in Australia with a focus on energy efficient design and renewable energy. There was also a high degree of focus on the value created by connecting light rail with walking and cycling and other public transport options, which is helping to provide communities with more accessible and sustainable transport options. The value capture mechanisms, these are helping to create a more fair and equitable system by ensuring that those who directly benefit from the infrastructure are able to contribute to its cost. And this reduces the reliance on government as the sole funding source and also helps to drive a higher quality infrastructure and amenity. Um, thinking both early about the value creation for the project and the opportunities for value capture has um, helped create a much more robust business case, as well as the ability to realise the vision for urban transformation. Rob, do you want to take us through a couple more of the, the Sydney projects? Sure, thank you, Lauren. Look, across the Tasman Sea, the light rail renaissance has been realised in Australia since the early 2000s. Oricon's been involved in and active on almost every light rail project in Australia. These projects you see are a sample of our light rail pedigree with our involvement in planning, business case support, feasibility, optioneering, right through design, construction, and through to revenue service. But if we turn our minds to project implementation, what about the impact of disruption? Disruption really is only heartfelt when the end is unknown. I think about COVID a bit these days. This is an image of Parramatta Light Rail under construction from earlier this year. It's an area looking towards Eat Street, which is now a pedestrianised precinct in place, you know, benefiting the loved area of shopping and dining as a precinct. If I take my eyes off the technical design of the stone sets that you see being laid and the importance of encapsulating rail boot, I also think about the retail businesses along this section of the corridor. And Transport for New South Wales has shown great leadership to build from lessons learnt on similar projects uh, plan uh, for local businesses. It's not simply a matter of handing out payments. Think about some of the businesses in this environment. They're small and they've got challenging operational cash flows. So Transport for New South Wales initiated business impact assessments and business activation plans. What does this mean? It means community activities. It means retail incentivization, shop local campaigns, pop-ups, public domain installations. But from my understanding, what was valued most was the free business advisory services so for, for these small businesses. So one-on-one -on -one financial and business mentoring and opportunities such as online and product diversification and enacting this well before any impact actually took place on site. And when I think about corridor revitalization, Newcastle's introduction of light rail was paramount to opening up their CBD to the waterfront. This was particularly evident through the removal of heavy rail and delivering the first wire-free system along its entire route in Australasia. But the question is, when you're in the early stages of a business case, how do you communicate transformative vision like this? We'd like to sh finish by sharing an example of how Oricon's unsigned studio successfully communicated this transformative impact that Newcastle's revitalization would have on their community. Newcastle's a great place. And I just love this place to turn back into the, the glory days of what the Newcastle CVD was. to see more live music events in that area on the foreshore or in some of the parks there because I know every time we go in there we're looking for things to do but there's not very much happening. We've got all these beautiful views and the heritage. 
If we can work with that and come up with clever ways to get families playing outside, then there's much more hope than I'd feared. Light rail and bicycle infrastructure and walking is what this city needs, in my view. Everywhere where they put light rail, we're seeing business boom and we've seen the area develop and actually become a much more um, efficient city. By linking the old city directly with the harbour would be a huge asset and encourage the free flow of people backwards and forwards. The whole area all the way down through that car park and across the Civic Theatre could be mm. nice open space with lots of gardens. And allow the, the uni students to come in the open space in the sunshine and study. Also I'd like to see it developed for families so it could be dual purpose for the uni students throughout the week and then families on the weekend. People are excited about it. They can sort of smell it in the air and they know it's close. The business community now sees something happening and progressing and that means we can employ more people, we can employ more young people, that's, that's what we want. We hope to have strong job opportunities so that we can stay here in the yeah. future. Just needs that infrastructure behind it with transport and making sure it's still a safe and community orientated place. It's been dormant for long enough, it's, it's time for change. <laughs>